Hi, welcome to Fundamentals Friday. Today we're going to take a look at one of the most fundamental laws in electronics, as fundamental as Ohm's law. It's called Kirchhoff's laws, or more specifically, Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now you've probably heard people, including myself, in a lot of my videos just throw away the term Kirchhoff's law. Oh, and you know, by Kirchhoff's law, blah, 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 blah. And some people don't actually know what it is, but I bet you, you already fundamentally know it, even if you've never heard of it. Now, we're actually going to get into a little bit of math today, but don't worry about it. Kirchhoff's laws are simple, dead simple, even simpler than Ohm's law, because they're just laws that you don't even have to remember a formula. They're just basically a concept, a very powerful concept that allows us to do some pretty advanced mathematics in electronics, although we're going to stick to some fairly simple stuff today. As with many things in electronics, named after the person who discovered it, Gustav, good on you, Gustav Kirchhoff, in about 1845 or thereabouts. Now, there are two fundamental Kirchhoff's laws. The first one we're going to take a look at is Kirchhoff's current law, or KCL for short. The other one is Kirchhoff's voltage law, and we'll do that next. So let's take a look at the current law. It's real easy. How easy? Let me show you. Kirchhoff's current law states, in a roundabout way, the sum of currents into a junction equals the sum of currents out of a junction. Current in must equal current out. That's it. That's, that's the entirety of Kirchhoff's current law. Nothing more complicated than that. So just like the fundamental laws of physics, like the conservation of energy, effectively what Kirchhoff is saying here is this is a conservation of charge. If you put charge into a loop circuit, it must come out. Charge in equals charge out. Or in this specific case, we're talking about a junction point in a circuit. Current in equals current out. It's that easy. You already know it. It's fundamental. It's obvious. So fundamentally, that's it. You don't need to know any more than that. You now know Kirchhoff's current law. Current in equals current out. It's too simple. But eh, there's some powerful things we can do with it. So let's take a look at an example, shall we? We've just got a resistor here and two resistors in parallel here. That We've got current flowing in, I1 here. Let's just assume it's flowing in here and it's into this junction. You remember we're talking about a junction here. And then we've got two paths coming out. So we've got I3 coming out and I2 coming out here. So we can actually have a formula. We can go I1 equals I2 plus I3. Remember the sum of the currents into the junction. In this case we've only got one, but we could have more than one. And the equals the sum of the currents out of the junction. So I1 is in, I2 and I3 are out. That's it. And if we had another current coming in here, for example, like this, and going in, and we can call that I0, it'd just be I0 plus I1. Remember, the sum of the currents in equals the sum of the currents going out. But sometimes it's actually more powerful mathematically to say this, which is exactly the same. We're basically just rearranging it. We can go I0 plus I1 minus I2, and I'll explain why in a second, minus I3 equals zero. It's basically just a rearrangement of that formula. So what this rearrangement of the formula means, and you typically would write this like uh, directly like this straight off the bat, and we'll do this in further examples to come. Basically, any current flowing into a junction, you uh, define that as a positive current. So I0 is flowing in, so it's positive I0 plus I1 is also flowing into the junction, so it's a positive, but I2 is flowing out of the junction, so you actually define that as a negative current, and likewise for I3 there, it's a negative current as well. So you come up with this equation like this, and you can write the equation for any number of currents flowing in or any number of currents flowing out of a junction, even if you've got one current flowing in and one current flowing out, you can still write the basic equation. And the thing about this is it's not a formula that you have to remember. It's just a concept that current in equals current out. Now, of course, I can build up a boring circuit and actually demonstrate that current in equals current out, but there's no point. But I'll just give you one little simple example here where you might use Kirchhoff's current law in the real world, for example, to analyze 
a circuit here. Let's take an op amp. We've got an inverting configuration. You should be uh, familiar with something like this. We've got a positive voltage here, and by op amp action, one of the basic rules of the op amp is our uh, non-inverting terminal here is at zero volts. It's a ground, so therefore the uh, inverting terminal is also at ground. So we're going to have a current flowing through like this. So remember, look, we've got a current flowing into a junction point right here, okay? Where does it flow? Well, it can't flow into here, can it? Because the input impedance of an op amp is supposed to be infinite, or an ideal one, so it's got to flow all the way up here like this. So we've got a current coming out, but in the real world, a practical op amp will have some input leakage current in here, okay? So we've got IL there, for example, leakage. So this could be, say, I out, and this is I in. So in this case, you can actually come up with the equation that I in equals I out plus I L. Because, remember, current in must equal current out. We've got two currents coming out of a junction. The one that goes up this resistor, the feedback resistor here, and the tiny little current in there, they must be equal. And if you've got a practical op amp and you've got good enough equipment, you can actually measure the leakage current in there and this current up this resistor plus this leakage current must equal the current going in. It's a fundamental law of physics. It's Kirchhoff's current law. And you'll notice that I actually called currents going into the junction positive and those coming out negative. I put them here in the formula like that. That doesn't have to be the case. You can basically do make them positive or negative. It makes no difference as long as you're consistent. And we'll actually see this further on in the video where we can actually get negative results and things like this, which actually tells us something fundamental about the circuit that we're trying to analyze. So that's it. I know we went into a bit of detail and we came up with some equations here, but it's just a concept. Current in equals current out. Got it? Beauty. Let's move on to Kirchhoff's voltage law. Kirchhoff's other law is called Kirchhoff's voltage law, or KVL for short. And just like Kirchhoff's current law, it's incredibly simple. It's just a concept, no formula to remember at all, and you probably already know it. It's obvious and intuitive, really. What uh, it basically says in a roundabout sort of way, the sum of the applied voltages around a loop, it always has to do with, remember a circuit doesn't do anything unless you have a loop. So the sum of the applied voltages around the loop equals the sum of the voltage drops around that loop. Simple, right? So if we take a look at a circuit here, we have a voltage source here, E1, and we have three series resistors like this. As simple as it gets. So just like we did for Kirchhoff's current law, we can make an equation. E1 equals, remember, this is the sum of the applied voltages. In this case, we only have one applied voltage. E1 equals what? The sum of the voltage drops around that loop. So of course we're gonna, when current flows, we're gonna have a voltage drop across R, we're gonna have VR1, voltage drop across R2, voltage drop across R3. So you can probably do this yourself, even if you're not good at math. It's easy, E1 equals VR1 plus, remember it's a sum, plus VR2 plus VR3. Bingo, we have an equation. Easy. So you might be thinking at this point, well, this is all very academic and obvious. Like, what's the point of this? You're just doing math for the sake of, you know, equations for the sake of equations. Well, we'll see later how they actually can come in useful analyzing circuits. But yes, this is quite an academic uh, concept. And of course, you just use it every day in circuit theory. Like, you know, you don't even think about it. You go, oh, of course, current in equals current out of a junction. And of course, uh, the voltage drops around a circuit must equal the voltage applied. It's simple. And it is. There's nothing more complicated about Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law. And if you just take that away from this video, then hey, you've learned the concept. You don't necessarily have to get into all the academic stuff of deriving equations and solving circuits and all that sort of stuff. But if you understand the concepts, they're still quite powerful in their own right. Even if they're bloody obvious like this, you can at least, you know, when you're uh, explaining circuits to people, oh yeah, just throw in, oh, because of Kirchhoff's current law, blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it just makes you sound like you know what you're talking about.
And just like Kirchhoff's current law, we can add more things to this and just expand our equation here. In this case, let's actually be kind of tricky and put in another battery here, but we're actually going to put it a reverse polarity to what we have before. And let's see what that does to our equation. Okay, we've still got E1, okay, the sum of the applied voltages, okay, but because this voltage here, you have to go around the loop and look at, you have to determine a direction of current around the loop like that. And by convention, as we'll see later, we choose a clockwise current like that. So if you go around, you notice this battery is going from positive to negative, whereas this one, the current is flowing from negative to positive. So E1 will define as positive, but if we define E1 as positive, then, oh, sorry, E2 here, E2 is negative relative to E1. So E2, uh, E1 minus E2 equals the voltage drops. Aha. So now maybe you might be able to start to see how we can start forming equations and possibly solving much more complicated circuits using Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law. But that's it. But hey, once again, we can start doing some silly academic stuff, rearranging formulas, but it's kind of important. So let's do that. Let's say, uh, let's just rearrange this formula we've got here. Let's say we just want E1 on the one side here. We can go E1 equals VR1 plus VR2 plus VR3, exactly the same as before, but the negative E2 becomes a positive E2 like that. And you can actually see that kind of makes sense if you think about it. Uh, if we're talking about a voltage drop across R1, voltage drop across R2, voltage drop across R3, but because E2 is the other direction according to the current flow we chose, it's also a drop. And the sum of the applied voltages equals this sum of the voltage drops. Bingo, we've got this one is applied, all the others are drops. So this voltage source, even though we uh, sort of, we had it as an applied voltage before, you can also think about it as a voltage drop, depending on which side of the equation it's on. Like I said, it's academic, but it makes sense. And just like Kirchhoff's current law, you often uh, see it stated as equal to zero. And in fact, that can be one of the definitions of Kirchhoff's voltage law as well. You don't necessarily have to think about it like this. You can think about it like this. Our, Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law is the algebraic sum of voltages around a loop. Algebraic is just a fancy word for uh, just for taking into account the sign of the voltages. So just like we showed here that this E2, you've got to get its actual sign correct. That's what algebraic means. It just means taking that into account. So now we can actually rearrange this formula to make this true as well. We can go VR1 plus VR2 plus VR3 plus uh, E2, exactly the same as before, but E1 now becomes minus E1 equals zero. Bingo, we've now got this expressed as an algebraic sum of voltages around a loop. And I've probably lost everyone now. You're probably going, what the, what? why? Yes, it's all kind of academic, but this concept of being equal to zero of things adding up around a loop is useful in analyzing complex circuits. And just like Kirchhoff's voltage law here, Kirchhoff's current law, which I forgot before, you can actually express it as the algebraic sum of currents at a junction equals zero. Exactly the same concept, rearrange it to zero. And just like Kirchhoff's current law is basically stating the conservation of charge, Kirchhoff's voltage law is essentially stating conservation of energy. The voltages applied around a circuit must equal the voltages drop. You know, that power in, power out, conservation of energy, laws of basic laws of physics, you know, can I beat the laws of physics, Captain? You know, Gustav, smart guy. So I'm actually gonna leave it there for this video and let you digest this. And we'll follow on in the next video, click here to check it out, where we actually apply Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law to actually analyze some circuits. And we'll use some of these equations that we've got here. It's a bit, you know, too advanced for this video just to explain what Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law actually is, because I could have done this video in two minutes. I could have just said, 
the sum of the applied voltages equals the loop and that's it and not worried about any of these equations and it's really just stating the obvious same thing with Kirchhoff's current law as well and you can as I said before think of it that easy if you just take away from the video that current in equals current out and the sum of the voltages around a loop actually equals zero or the voltages applied must equal the voltages dropped then well that's good enough you can use that in everyday circuit analysis but like I said it's probably already obvious to you but the next video we'll go into what I've got up here in the heading, which is looking at some DC circuit theorems where we apply Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's voltage law to actually analyze circuits. So if you found that useful, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, uh, comments down below on YouTube, on the blog website, or in the forum link down below as well. If you want the t-shirt, I'll link in my uh, merch uh, page down there where you can uh, sign up and get one of these puppies. So I'm not sure if it was actually worth 15 minutes explaining this sort of thing. I went into a bit of detail, but hopefully as you'll see in the next video, I am actually setting this up so that we can actually use these. And it is actually a very powerful concept, the DPU go into real you know steep circuit theory Kirchhoff's current and Kirchhoff's voltage laws and how things equal to zero very powerful stuff so stick around for the next video catch you next time